Okay, so some of you may know, a lot of you uh, probably don't know. Uh, I've been working on this series of YouTube videos uh, for the last four years or so called Climate Denial, Croc of the Week. And yes, I, I, I do use the D word, uh, Gavin. Uh, <laughs> but I want to talk about this croc. These crocs are basically my, uh, uh, that's my name for these crunchy little nuggets of disinformation that you're all familiar with. Uh, many of them are crafted in PR firms and think tanks, uh, specifically so that Rush Limbaugh can say them in 15 seconds, but it would take uh, Jeff Masters or Richard Alley or Mike Mann an hour to unpack them completely. And that's, that's why they're effective. And, and my thought was, you know, there's, you know, there's a few dozen of these things. Maybe I can use my skills as a cartoonist, as an animator, as a storyteller to maybe compress the time that it takes to, to counteract these things and push back against this tide of just horrible disinformation. Uh, and and the, the Internet gives you wonderful tools so that uh, when you do, you can point out uh, some of these things, and it may be as easy as just uh, uh, going a few paragraphs below the headline to show people why uh, it's nonsense, what they've been led to believe. Or you may be able to actually walk people through the process of what it takes for them to access the primary resources for themselves uh, and, and, and uh, thereby end a lot of arguments that way. So the uh, internet gives you a lot, of, a lot of tools in that regard. So I started creating these videos. They weren't really coming out once a week, but they were coming out pretty frequently. And I started uh, getting an audience of, uh, first a few dozen, then a few hundred people, and uh, so I was having fun. So I'll, I'll just show you a, a quick example where I took a piece of climate denial propaganda and just sort of riff on it a little bit. Late in the 10th century, the Vikings settled in Greenland. They found fertile fields and navigable waters teeming with codfish and seals. Generations had come to call this land their home. The medieval warm period, when happy Greenland Vikings developed crafts, pursued industry and trade, made fine wine, and even supported a thriving gay community. Okay, I was joking about the wine. Yeah, I, I lied about the wine, so, uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, so I'm having fun, uh, and I'm thinking, uh, how can I get this beyond this, you know, small group of people? And I started thinking about P.T. Barnum. P.T. Barnum would have been great in social media. Uh, he was known to, at times, hire a couple of people to show up in front of his box office and start throwing punches at each other. And his dictum was that if you want to draw a crowd, start a fight. And so thinking along those lines, I thought, is there anybody in the climate denial community that might be a little oversensitive, a little thin-skinned, a little possibly hyper-reactive if somebody poked fun at them? And in the course of doing my research, I came up with Anthony Watts, who's uh, obviously a highly visible guy. He's got a, a website out there that gets a lot of traffic, the number one science site on the web, we're told. And uh, he puts out a lot of disinformation and was richly kind of deserving a little, a little treatment. So I, I put together uh, something that kind of pokes some general fun at him and uploaded and waited. And within about 36 hours, sure enough, my video was taken down pursuant to a complaint by Anthony Watts of surfacestations.org under the Digital Millennial Copyright Act. Uh, the digital, uh, the DMCA as we call it, is uh, normally a tool that gets used by, uh, it's normally associated with groups like the Church of Scientology and uh, outfits like that that don't like to be uh, criticized. Uh, but the process is that uh, YouTube takes the video down, it goes into adjudication. But meantime, the uh, internet uh, reads censorship as damage and begins to route around it. So what happened is people started uh, mirroring and uploading this video and started to go viral under this basic meme, this is the video climate deniers don't want you to see. Uh, Joe Rome picked it up, uh, this is the video Anthony Watts does not want you to see, and so it really started to pick up quite a bit of an audience. And uh, two weeks later when YouTube came around and finished their adjudication and reinstated the video and agreed with me that there was absolutely nothing improper about it, 
uh, I had suddenly an audience that had grown from a few hundred to now tens of thousands and, you know, 50, 60, 80,000 uh, when I was putting out my videos. So, and those numbers are still small, I get it, uh, compared to the gerbil playing piano or the <laughs> hot chick doing anything, you know, those are small numbers. Uh, but one thing that social media does allow you to do is kind of narrow cast to a, a, a prime audience. And my audience consists of a lot of academics who use the videos to teach classes, um, a lot of journalists who use the videos to bone up on issues, uh, a lot of people in discussion groups who use the videos to end arguments, and uh, a pretty uh, solid group of Capitol Hill staffers. So. Uh, although none of us is going to put out uh, a project, even, even on PBS, that is going to blow away the competition, I like to think that I've reached the level where I might be kind of a micronutrient in this discussion. And um, so I continued on. Uh, let me see what's next. I think I'll show you just another s clip. I, I, I can't show you a whole uh, video. They're all like uh, six to ten minutes long, but I'll show you some clips. And you can go to my website afterwards. I'll give you that Earl, and I posted some today. Uh, this will give you an idea. Well, just as the nanny state readies for banning all things hot, comes a chilling report on climate change suggesting we are heading into a mini ice age. You'll hear an edge in my voice here. I apologize for that. One of the perennial golden oldies of science denial is the impending ice age myth. According to Frank Hill, associate director of the National Solar Observatory, this is highly unusual and unexpected. What is highly usual and expected is Fox News' distortion of what an actual scientist says about his research. That there is no prediction of any ice age, mini, maxi, little, big, or otherwise. So what kind of expert opinion did Fox News seek out to bolster their blatant perversion of the truth? Perhaps another specialist? A scientist with a different take on the evidence? An unbiased observer, perhaps. For more on the implications of all this, we welcome Competitive Enterprise Institute senior fellow Chris Horner. So, Chris, how reliable are these reports that we may be going into a mini ice age? These seem pretty compelling. Perfectly dressed, perfectly gelled, and almost perfectly tanned. This flack from a tobacco and oil funded Washington think tank gives us yet more of the predictable spin. Wouldn't it be refreshing to hear from an actual scientist who really knew something about the topic? My name is Dan Lubin. I'm a research physicist at the Scripps Institution of Oceanography at the University of California, San Diego. So that's the basic formula. Set up the crock, whatever it is, and then bring on the scientists to kind of take it apart or send people to the primary uh, resources. So um, I, uh, I've been... Uh, Fortunate that that formula is continuing to work. Uh, uh, I've also been fortunate that in the last year and a half, I've launched a companion series through the Yale Forum on climate change in the media. Uh, and I've titled that, This Is Not Cool. And that's a little bit different focus. It's not quite so combative. It tends to be more interviews with the scientists who are more and more making themselves available to me. And I'm letting them carry the narrative and tell the story. And it seems to be pretty effective. And in the course of that, I'm, I'm uh, meeting some truly extraordinary communicators, and one uh, that you should be aware of if you're not already, uh, Dr. Jennifer Francis, who is out of Rutgers and is maybe becoming one of our most valuable players over the last year or so. Uh, I'm going to show you a quick clip of her uh, delivering the, the ending piece for my annual sea ice video from 2012. Uh, I do a sea ice video at, in the fall of every year. And you'll see that she talks about the science, but you'll see also that she is not afraid to let her passion for the implications of the science really come to the fore. And that's what I think makes her so effective.
your voice. Okay, uh, I will remedy that somehow. In any case, Jennifer Francis, very good communicator. If you want to see that whole thing, you can go to climatecrocks.com. I've posted that video uh, there today. Um, in the meantime, uh, more recently, who I've been talking to is um, Dr. Jason Box. Uh, Dr. Box is a well-known uh, Greenland scientist. Uh, about eight or nine months ago, he invited me to go up to Greenland with him this summer. Uh, he's been looking at the, uh, the melt that's been taking place on Greenland, uh, increasing over recent decades. Uh, particularly in the last year, we saw a gigantic melt that took place uh, over the entire extent of the ice sheet, which had never been observed before. And um, uh, the concern is that uh, Dr. Box has been measuring a darkening of the surface of that ice sheet over the last decade. There are a number of natural processes that do this, but uh, one concern that he wants to investigate is whether or not the increasing number of acres burned by wildfires might be depositing more soot on the ice sheet and thereby setting up a, an as yet unquantified feedback. Um, so, uh, Bill McKibben is coming with us, and this is where the synergy really starts to get interesting because he's coming as both an activist, obviously, but also as a writer. He'll be covering it for Rolling Stone, and Rolling Stone is cooperating with me in pushing out social media that will be going out as we're up there in the field uh, and uh, actually keeping people uh, updated with this thing as it goes along and hopefully reaching some different audiences than we might normally reach. So the whole thing is uh, uh, under the auspices of the Dark Snow Project, and uh, uh, it was uh, Dr. Box's brainchild that we crowdsource fund this science uh, expedition. And one of the things that we found out is that it is really hard to crowdsource a science expedition. Uh, so we're still raising money. Uh, we've got barely enough to get up there. We're, we're going to go. Uh, Jason assures me that we won't have to swim back, but um, it's going to be close. So if you if you got any extra cash or if you have that billionaire uncle, send them to darksnowproject.org. And uh, I would urge you to go to climatecrocks.com. I've posted a number of these videos in their entirety. And uh, there's also a playlist there, and you can look that over, and you can contact me from there. But uh, I just want to say what, what a great, exciting conference this has been for me and what a pleasure it is to meet the people that I admire so much and get a chance to interact with them. So I hope we'll have more chances to chat as the day goes on. So thank you very much.